That's cute. Yeah. Definitely have that at the beginning. Yeah, that's how you should start this episode. Uh, my name is Storm Santos. I'm an editorial photographer here in Los Angeles. And we're on a shoot. I hope that's good. Um, I'm really lucky because I have my own studio, so I can have the leisure of putting on clothes 10 minutes before I have to actually shoot. So, and I get to bring my dog, which is nice, which is cool. Um, yeah, I love to shoot with like a bare bulb. I try to make things as harsh as possible without making it too pretty. So we're just using like a regular pro photo head with a, a bare reflector and then we just kind of like start from there. So I like to sit sometimes because I'm lazy. <laughs> But cool. I love that. Cool, actually. Yeah, sweet. Secret, secret sauce. So I think if you're excited and you feel like you're involved in what they're doing or care about who they are, like they'll kind of like perk up someone who has some type of status when we're shooting is find a connection point. And then once you can find out that you're like a normal human being and you treat them as a normal human being, but we both work in the industry, I think that's like a super valuable thing. Hanging out, kid? Carl Lagerfeld just with like web, <laughs> webbed, webbed leather gloves on. Cause that's the way I want to. Yeah, like not actually a full beard, but it's like, it's only on this front chin part. Yeah, I think that guy's talented, huh? Lift his beard up, there's nothing there. It's actually a little man actually working the mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna get a phone call from Carl Lego for this people and be like, hey, you son of a bitch. So I use a 5D Mark IV. I basically just use every cannon that just keeps coming out. It's kind of like creature of habit. You kind of learn one thing and then you kind of can't stop. Um, I try to use medium format like when we do bigger stuff. Typical Apple products. Uh, my DigiCart's like one of my favorite things because it can fold down and do all kinds of cool things and it's also built like a tank. Yeah, I use all Canon glass and Pro Photo stuff. It's pretty much everything that's reliable. Um, I kind of like don't. I have three. I use a 24 to 70, a 70 to 200, and I have an 85 one two. Those two. I think I tend to go to the 24 to 70 because it's so versatile and it's like sharp as hell. But if I had to like choose one all the time, I'd kind of go for either the 24 or the 85. Yeah, so basically, I'm using like a cross lighting. It's called like parallel lighting, um, just for like a really dramatic portrait. We have like a harsh bulb on the face, and she's going to be angled out, and then we have like a little bit of like a hair light. And then we just let the background not be lit and it kind of has like a glowy effect that you kind of see happen. Um, I'm just gonna test it a little bit and we'll see how it goes. Also, I think the most valuable piece of gear any photographer can have is a good assistant. What makes for a great Someone that you don't have to ask to do anything, which doesn't happen day one, but once they get a rhythm of the way you do things, you tell them, hey, this is the kind of way I want it to be today, and they just do it. That's awesome. And someone that you can like hang out with too. I don't like to just have like robots on set. Like you gotta have people who are fun to talk to, because if they're not on talk to, then there's nothing there. <laughs> so I use a speed light for like hair light and stuff. If it's a quick shoot and like you we if we don't have the time, I feel like a speed light is really easy and you can just slave them out. They're small, you can keep them in your bag. You don't need to have a whole case for them. Um, and they're quick and simple. And for like a speed light, for a hair light, it's really, really easy. I think convenience and function sometimes are the, the key. Yeah, a lot of photographers that are like getting started and they get so nervous about spending money on gear. I feel like that's how I feel about spending money on gear too. I feel like whatever's available to you and you have the budget for, make it work for yourself because you can get great images out of some of the cheapest stuff. I've seen people use flashlights and 
get awesome photos. I've used flashlights and got awesome photos before, so. There you go. It's almost like you're taking a breath. I feel like whenever I tell people to do like commercially um, smiley stuff, think of like it as like a, like a target ad. Everything's like almost like taking a breath, like, <gasps> yeah. It's almost like the germ, the germ, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, now you owe me $350, thank you. It's like, that in and out breathing, <gasps> falling down, fake ah, smile, and we'll be good. There you go. Three, two, one. There you go. I think the way to get a good genuine smile when you're not trying to like cheesify it up, if you can get them to actually laugh, that's when you start just praying and spraying. It's good to have a, a funny little bulldog on set like I do, but say this, screen is her, there's a light here and there's a light here, and it creates one parallel line. And you get like a, a pretty cool, I always say don't ever light on the same axis. So you're getting like all these lights on this side and nothing on that side, because then it starts to feel a little lopsided and not so three dimensional. At least the way I like to light things. Um, first in studio, I always mess with things to the extreme just to see like where things lie before I actually start doing like the editing process. So I'll just like pump up full shadow, full highlight, just to be like, okay, here's like, obviously that's so aggressive and not great looking, but you can kind of see where everything lies clearly and then you bring it back and you're like, okay, cool. These are the things I want to fix and these are the things I liked where light landed and just kind of things like that. For all the people who are trying to shoot studio that don't have a studio, find a white wall, find a colored wall, do anything. And if you do any type of mildly softened bared bulb and you keep them relatively close to that wall, you can get like some pretty cool, little more edgy contrast and light stuff. So you can kind of see like a shadow line here, shadow line there. You get a little bit more like defined cheekbones and chin and stuff like that. And you can kind of get a lot with it. You, get a, you can do great wides, you can do close up, you can do, you can get away with a lot with one light on a white wall. Sometimes you get into a groove and you like do that for like a week and then you're like, oh, I hate that now. Oh, now I want to do this. Or you get inspired. I look, I read a lot of magazines and books and stuff like that. So I just be like, oh cool, I want to try to do that. Or I feel like I need to get out of the studio. I've been in there for a month now. It's, it, it just depends. I'm, I get a little like cabin fever. I, I feel like every photographer finds a goal, finds a groove, gets in it, and you kind of find that light in their shots always, but it's always just kind of placed differently and toned a little differently. But if you can find a style and you can find it relatively fast, that'll keep you working. Because it distinguishes, oh, that looks like you, that looks like that person. And that was taught to me by a friend when I was really getting into the thick of photography, and it just like stuck in my head, like, do it until people start recognizing that it's you. You start to get burnt out on it, that's when you try different things. Don't be afraid to try different things. I feel like, have fun with it. If you love what you do and you keep enjoying with it, then you'll have a great time.